Hey guys, and welcome to 10 things you missed in Deep Oaken. Let me know how many of these you knew in the comments, and without further ado, let's get into the video. Number 1. The VFX for Astral are closely related to that of the Rage Gem from Verdant Moon. This is likely since that Iltria is a former developer of Verdant Moon and also Deep Oaken, who most likely made Astral, supported by the fact that they were a wishmaker and their spec was actually to give people Astral. Number 2. The Song Seekers have a leader who is named by Yamuskiel. Me? Song Master Chazar and I am the mighty Song Seeker Mistress. Think three for yourself, student, but not outside the box. It says that he is the Song Seeker leader named Tazarian. Since the other characters he mentions we can see in game, it is likely that Tazarian is truly the leader of the Song Seeker. Number 3. The destructible environment in Shime counts as a hit when you swing or cast a mantra on it. This allows the second part of attacks to follow through. For example, the Spear Crit, Revenge, and Warden Ceremonial Sword will have proc their secondary effect after you're hidden in a Shime environment. Number 4. There are many upon many references to other games of Deep Hogan, such as Petra's Anchor and the Mayakir the Megalodon and the Shark Giant, the Yelis Pure Keeper and Blade, never mind. But most notably, the combat in Deep Oaken is directly inspired from Sekiro, which has a focus on parry and imposture. There is even a reference to the last boss, Ishinashina, as the Ishin Ring. Number 5. In the hidden village next to the Tower Struck lands, there under a house exists a friendly golem named Marcus. Not much is really said by him, but sup. Number 6. In layer 2 past Pilgrims of Spite, and past the Carbuncle event at the end of the path, if you jump off, there is a yeti frozen in ice at the bottom. This in itself is a reference to Rogue Lineage, which was the game preceding Deep Oaken. Number 7. The name Deep Oaken actually has a meaning in the world of the game. A Deep Oaken refers to a person who has consumed a part of a drowned god. This is exactly the opposite of a star kindred who is a person who has consumed a part of a celestial. There are two Deep Oakens we currently know about being Armorous Plitsky and the first prophet of the ministry. Plitsky brought flame charm to the world, and it is highly likely that the first prophet brought Shadowcast. As well, the other main attunements, Gale Breath, Frost Draw, and Thundercall, were also likely discovered by Deep Oakens or something similar in nature. This is unlike the attunements like Iron Sing, which are man-made applications of the song. Number 8. Plume, the NPC in Lance Lushy's shop, actually used to be Pleatsky in Wave Zero, revealed by Agamatsu in one of his streams. This is likely the reason why he gives you Pleatsky safe and is also a flame worshipper, as he literally used to be Pleatsky himself. This begs the question that was Pleatsky originally gonna be a Ganymede before t came out? Number 9. In the first Holotide event, there was a pumpkin you could talk to who said he was known as the Big Cheese where he was from. This is actually a reference to the Verdant Moon Discord server where one of the head mods, and also a mod for Deep Oren, named Zelfernos, had a role called the Big Cheese. Zelfernos also used the pumpkin as his OC. This is likely added by Iltria before she left the team. Sadly, I can't find any image proof, and I believe the Verdant Moon Discord server has gotten deleted after the allegations, so you just don't have to take my word for it. Number 10. Dalmarker's halo is actually in the shape of Deep Oaken's moon. It seems as though the power of the moon is extremely powerful in Deep Oaken, hinted through the moon's eye tome, which grants knowledge, and also moon's eerie, which holds powerful weapons as well as the moon lights. The moon also seems to be distantly connected to Astral, as the moon knights have a chance to drop its enchant stone, where the Astral knights will drop it 100% of the time. Perhaps Dalmarker's radiant stones are more akin to the moon, it is luminous glow, than something like the sun. Although I might just be reading into things too much. And with that, that's the end of the video. If you guys learned something new or perhaps there was something I missed, let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if you like this type of video. As well, I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers before the end of summer, which is a month away for me, so if you enjoyed, simply subscribing would help out a ton, but no pressure. Also, sorry for this being a shorter video. This was literally me sitting down for two hours thinking of ideas to add them in, and I'm not a fan of drawing things out longer than they need to be. So with that, I'll see you guys next time.